All right, first Toku vlog, and first chance for all of you to hear my voice and see my face. All right, Ninja episode 30, and my overall thoughts on Drive. Let's get this thing over with here. First off, Ninja. Everyone on the show is still an idiot. Oh, really? Nope, eff it's shock. All right, yeah, episode 30, Izai always unleashed a uh, black ant shinobi in order to try and possess... Oh, well, uh, yeah, sensei of Takahar uh, Takaharu's friend. Well, yeah, his, you know, kind of girlfriend. And mostly just so he, he can, you know, use the new dojo that he set up uh, to go and, uh, to go and train uh, some students, uh, uh, the students of his, to becoming a uh, yokai core ninja. Though, yeah, Takaharu shows up, says, Hey, they're not getting us into this! Uh, when you know he notices that the, uh, that the uh, sensei in question is encouraging them to you know, be more lethal and be more uh, detached and emotionless from how they fight. Gee, Takaharu, it's almost as if ninjas were trained to kill people. <laughs> when the hell did this happen, dude? You're not exactly making yourself look all that good. All that good if the ninjas from Miami Connection are laughing at you. You know. The idiots that went and lost to a, uh, to a, a stupid ass band called Dragon Force or uh, uh, Dragon Strike. Uh, yeah, forget it. I, I I haven't seen Miami Connection. Just seen you know, like some reviews of it, and oh boy, does it look stupid. Anyways, yeah. And meanwhile, over at the villain camp, uh, let's see. Uh, what's the name of uh, what's the name of Grandpa Cthulhu? Let's see. Uh, Mm. Well, you know what? Whatever. You already know what he looks like, Grandpa Cthulhu. You know the, I mean, you know the old man with the tentacles and the condescending voice towards QMon. <laughs> yeah, I'll call him Grandpa Cthulhu. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of old farts, yeah. Takahara mentioned uh, to uh, to uh, to his old friend and how you know, it's weird that it, uh, that is uh, that is Grandpa Yoshitaka just suddenly happened to show up even though they thought he was dead. Yeah, I've actually been thinking about this, and I've got myself a little bit of a theory, which could explain a lot of things. My personal theory is that Yoshitaka, uh, Takaharu, and the Ninja's grandpa, he is dead, and it's actually and is actually his corpse, you know, being possessed by Gengets, uh, you know, the big bad for the Ninja. Yeah, he's just been taking them out on a joyride, learning all he can about the Ninjas, and trying to sabotage them as much as he possibly could. But then again, that would actually make sense, and I highly... But, just throwing that theory out there, that would actually make some semblance of sense. Because, yeah, for most of the show, Yoshitaka has been an even worse mentor than Gosei. Yeah, I'm going there. Gosei was completely useless. He just said... There's a simple explanation, and just gives them, uh, give, uh, gave the Mega Force Rangers powers out the wazoo. And uh, Yoshitaka, at least they did actively try to sabotage their team's development. Yeah, uh, Yoshitaka not explaining about the celestial about the celestial Otomonin, what they actually need to do to improve themselves, pitting Kenji against them. That would actually make sense if it was actually Gigetz uh, that's uh, that was pulling the strings of a corpse. In fact, we actually see, uh, yeah, it says, get, get set, is, oh, and, oh, yeah, actually, it's quite the coincidence that, uh, that the old, uh, that, you know, I've actually taken to uh, call a Yoshitaka old ninja. Uh, it's quite coincidental that he just happened to show up as soon as Gengetsu's army was released by his Ayoi. Wait, you mean there's actually a correlation to that? I know that, um, but of course I know this show isn't going to go that way. I'm just doing, I'm just leading my, uh, my grandkids and my would-be apprentice into danger because I just want to see them squirm. <laughs> yeah, but, well, again, my theory would actually make some semblance of sense. And... We know these types of shows nowadays don't exactly like to do the logical thing. No sirree, Bob. Yeah, I, I've actually come to a bit of a revelation about Sentai recently. The plots have been getting, like, a lot dumber and a lot less... Well, 
I don't want to sound like a uh, like one of those guys who are like, oh, it's it's not dark, it's not brutal, it's not gory enough. I mean, come on, the old days were way better. <laughs> Nowadays, it's just way too kitty friendly, and it all just fucking sucks, bro. No, 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 no. I don't care if your to if the show's tone is dark or not. Just at least be competently written. And yeah, you know, I'm one of the very few people out there that actually kind of liked Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters tried to uh, tell a serious story. And apparently it failed, like, uh, failed so spectacularly in that regard, and it, it pretty much should have come up with its own Mission Accomplished banner. But yeah, starting with Cure Uter, the shows have been getting a lot less, well... Well, not exactly more lighthearted, just... Just kind of leaning more towards idiot logic. Oh, and the idiot logic absolutely hit its zenith with Tokyuger, but I don't want to get started on Tokyuger again. Really don't. I fucking hate right. I fucking hate right. Anyways. Anyway, yeah. Back to the main plot here. Oh, yeah. My, my main thing is, I think that if the show were smart, it would uh, present... Um, Yoshitaka as actually being Gigetsu all along, but since that would actually be somewhat smart and actually kind of original, somewhat, it probably isn't gonna go that route. Sorry there, mates. Anyways, yeah, the plot. Or what tries to pass as one. Yeah, Takaharu, uh, well, uh, Takaharu manages to upstage his friend when he is demonstrating his ninja skills to the students, yeah, basically just going through all the court, uh, course himself saying, Oh, yeah, this is totally, yeah, this, you could totally do this. You know, uh, dude, you're not, yeah, again, you're not exactly showing yourself as a better, ma uh, better man by just, uh, going around and making your friend look like a complete chump. But, again, I still prefer Takaharu a million times over Wright. Mainly because while Wright was a absolute tard, with about as much common sense as, uh, well, let's face it, anyone that tries to uh, run for, uh, anyone that tries to run for, uh, for Congress nowadays, yeah, just freaking any lack of common sense whatsoever, Takaharu, I tend to think of as more like Goku. Yeah, well, he might be an idiot in a lot of places, he's damn good at what he wants to do. He like, fight, practice his, nin his ninjutsu, you know. Sees everything else as is kind of irrelevant. I mean, I, I kind of get that because you know, like with Goku, there's actually some kind of you know, like focus and determination that actually goes into, you know, and actually some drive that goes into perfecting this kind of craft. And yeah, let's face it, this isn't exactly a whole lot of easy stuff to do, even with the god with the big old CGI budget. Anyways. Well, yeah, uh, the rest uh, the rest of Takaharu's team, yeah, not being completely rock-stupid bastards, uh, tail the guy because they have their suspicions, and sure enough, they, uh, while, uh, while Yakumo and Katsumi are tracking him, they get attacked by, uh, they get attacked by Grandpa Cthulhu, uh, but as soon as he fails to, uh, well, yeah, as soon as he fails to take one of them out, uh, take down, uh, Kinji, I think, uh, you know, to go and warn Takaharu about this. He's just like, oh, oh shit, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, uh, well, like, oh wait, one of them got away. Uh, yeah, I can't just go and finish the, uh, the two off now while the others are, uh, you know, like off, uh, while the others are off doing their thing. Nope, I gotta make sure to get them all at once when they're at their full strength. Though, admittedly, uh, you know, the guy is supposed to be some kind of a manipula uh, manipulator. He knows that the uh, that the ninjas are not the sharpest kunai in the in the, you know, like the sleeve there. So yeah, they figured. So yeah, he kind of figured that Takaharu was just gonna go charging in uh, to go and start kicking down doors and saying, "Hey, your sensei uh, uh, collaborated with the yokai," and <laughs> sure enough, they and that's what happens because they're idiots. They're friggin' idiots. And yeah, Takaharu is the grand pooba of putts. And just, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you at least have Yakumo or Kits uh, uh, Katsumi go along with you because, yeah, they are the, the, the book smartiest uh, members of the team. 
book smart is, you know, you, you know what, they have, they actually, they are defined essentially as the smart ones. So, you know, go along with him, actually, you know, like, verify his claims, since, yeah, Takahara ain't exactly, uh, you know, that much of a grand motivator. You know, the grand master manipulator, you know, a very persuasive dude, he just, he just screams, Oikita! At the top of his lungs, to the point where I just want to kick him and his gonads until he shuts up. So, yeah. But, eventually, and, and yeah, when the sensei corners them, he just says, you know what, fuck it. He transforms and just goes straight, at, uh, straight after uh, you know, the sensei. And sure enough, because he get, manages to force the ant lion ninja off of him. The shenanigans ensue, and... Uh, and well, the fight uh, fight goes on, and he's Iowa manages to get another another shuriken off of the guy off of the guy that gets killed. Uh, and yeah, since these things are uh, uh, connected to Takaharu and Fuka's dad's uh, own mentality, which is their token phrase for their Sentai power sources, I'm honestly curious where that's going to lead to. Although, yeah, for previews in the next episode, it's just going to lead to, I don't know, being Gears and some giant clockwork robot thingy. Yeah, I, But, again, I do want to see... I, I will bet you dollars to donuts that if the show is actually some semblance of smart, that Yoshitaka turns out to be possessed by Gin Gets this whole time. But, of course, I'm going to lose that bet. Because that would be the smart thing to do. And we can't have smart writing nowadays, can we, kids? Though, they say that genius and insanity are very, very thinly divided. Which then leads to the finale of Common Rider Drive. So, yeah, uh, Hart, uh, Hart and Shinosuke manage to go and defeat the Sigma Circuit. All of the people get restored back to, their, uh, back to, uh, back to normal. Chase is still dead. And so Hart just goes and finishes, uh, tries to fight Shinosuke's sense. He's the last Roy mute, last bit of business to settle, last the whole, and the last piece of Bono's insane horse shit. But he manages to get, uh, managed to have gotten himself damaged in the fight against Sigma. And yeah, knowing that, he just slowly starts to die. But he just wanted this one last fight against Shinosuke to go and, well, well, he said he was going to do it. So, might as well. And then afterwards, the tradition, the wrap-up goes, oh, oh yeah, almost forgot. When Shinosuke falls after defeating Sigma from the top of the building, he gets pulled into, well, the spirit world, for lack of a better term. And we get ourselves a first glimpse of Ghost, as he helps to fight off against Freeze, uh, the Thief Roy Mute, and the Sword Roy Mute. Well, or at least Ghost versus them, and says, uh, uh, says to Shinosuke, Dude, you, it ain't your time yet. Get a uh, GTFO. Okay. <sighs> but yeah, anyways, wrap up time. Yeah, all the Roy Mews are, all the Roy Mews are dead. They're extinct. Congratulations, you committed genocide. Genocide on a species that were mainly trying to wipe out humanity. Ugh. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, and they actually, they actually managed to find the human that Chase based himself off of. You know, this police, or this, you know, like, uh, this, uh, this cop who, you know, actually kind of behaves a bit like Go. But, yeah, back, uh, and, you know, a little bit of laugh there. Anyways, they, uh, yeah, they head on, on down to the drive pit, and Krim basically seals himself, uh, the shift cars, uh, the signal bikes, and, well, most of the signal bikes, and, well, try to on and go and chase his bikes and uh, uh, seal up inside this, like, like at the do bowels of the earth in case it was ever needed again. A.K.A. when the next crossover movie happens because, yeah, dude, once you put on the belt, you ain't, get you ain't gonna take it off. But, yeah, happy endings all around. We know that, uh, we know that Shinosuke and Kiriko are gonna get together and Drive essentially concludes. All right. Having seen Drive since the first episode to the last, well, okay, missing some of the movie, missing the movies, well, specifically Surprise Drive, or Surprise Futures, sorry, I've got myself a bit of a 
odd thought with the show. I mean, like, first thing that's kind of bugged me since I started doing a little bit of research, the Roy Mutes, all three types are based on uh, notable monsters in the, fr uh, on, in the franchise. You know, like the spider, uh, which is based off of the first monster that uh, the first writer fought against. The bat being the second, which makes sense. The cobra, on the other hand... Um, I mean, yeah, it's based off of the first uh, monster to be revived and then remodeled. But personally, I would have gone with the, oh, you know, like with the third one, you know, keeping it consistent. The scorpion. I mean, it's been kind of, I mean, I mean, hell. I mean, like the scorpion is the organization of the Great Leader's third organization, Destron. So, you know, that would kind of fit, you know, with being the third type of Roy Mude. You know, well, the cobra kind of works too, but, well, you know, uh, they all have fangs. They can secrete some form of venom. Uh, I don't know. I, I just I probably would have been all right if there were just like four different types of Roy Mutes, especially since there was uh, 108 of them. You know, I, you know, I evenly divide them amongst the uh, different types. You know, like, like 001, the spider. And, oh, oh yeah, Freeze. If he was the very first Roy Mew to be created, why would why, wouldn't it make more sense to be uh, that he was a spider Roy Mew and not a cobra? Uh, anyways, yeah, the bat, the spider, the cobra, the scorpion. You know, I, I mean, yeah, sure, that would have been uh, meant a little bit more to you know, create a whole different set of costumes. But I'm just, I don't know, I just got a nitpick on there. Anyways, yeah, the show itself has been. Pretty, uh, well, the term I'm looking, yeah, the term I'm looking for is schizophrenic. Yeah, like, in the first 20 episodes, you know, especially after coming off of Gaim, it just kind of seemed jarring to go back to the more, to, uh, more toynetic version, you know, like setting of the show, you know, like, just, especially with the, right, they just kept on shitting out new shift cars over and over and over and over and over again. And, you know, not exactly helping matters is that they just kept on focusing on the stupid chaser subplot. I mean, yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, I drag it out for, like, the first ten episodes? Yeah, that's fine. But, you know, oh, no, wait! Medic showed up! Now we gotta press the reset button! Now he's evil again! Yay! No! No! Just, they just dragged that out as long as they could. I don't know. I don't know what was going on behind the scenes there, but, uh, just focusing so much on the damn shift cars and, you know, the more loose and, you know, incoherent storytelling, just, you know, jumping from one, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, sure, Gaim kind of spoiled me, but just going back to the basics, uh, you know, story structure again, you know, like, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just complaining about nothing, but... Yeah, you know, the reason why I'm gushing about Gaim so much, you know, it was just such a breath of fresh air at the time. Especially since, you know, before, you know, you know when I was watching Forza and Wizard, I was getting so tired of the same, you know, two-episode story arcs going on. You know, the I mean, first two episodes deal with this uh, with this monster. Then again, and again, and again, introducing a new weapon, new power. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, I, I admit, I, uh, yeah, again, I've said numerous times before... I wasn't really much into Wizard because, you know, senior year in college and whatnot, priorities. But, yeah. It's just been kind of, yeah. Drive has been kind of schizophrenic because, yeah, the first 20 episodes were just generic by the numbers. Although, as soon as they finally dropped the whole damn chase arc and they introduced uh, uh, 001, that's when things started to get good. And I, I actually... Kind of before that, when they introduced Nira. Or as I like to call him, Japanese Walter Peck. Because, yeah, it, let's face it, he has no dick. Uh, well, yeah, and at least Walter Peck actually had legitimate reasons for yeah, getting into Ghostbusters you know, like, affairs. Because, yeah, unlicensed, unregulated nuclear reactor in the middle of the city. I mean, like, hey, I was kind of on Peck's side. Nira, on the other hand... Was just made up pure raving psycho douche. It's like if Walter Peck was played by Jim Carrey or Nick Cage. Just, just so he wasn't chewing the ceiling. He wasn't chewing the scenery. He was inhaling it like, like Kirby. You know, just 
going around, like, it's just sucking in there. But, yeah. Anyways, once that, once that stuff happened, it started to get good. Especially, I mean, I, I mean, some conflict between Go and Chase, you know, with Chase starting to regain I mean, like his memories of I mean, like working for Krim. Um, yeah, and they actually started focusing on characters, and, well, might as well just get my thoughts on the characters first. Yeah, Shinosuke... Yeah, oh boy. Why was Shinosuke here again? I mean, yeah, I know that he actually got involved with the plot as soon as, you know, like, Freeze and Nero showed up because they then started dropping hints about Shinosuke's dad, and how, and later, 001 stated that it was because he ran to Shinosuke's dad and actually, you know, like, upstaged him by, you know, like, uh, making sure, uh, by, yeah, being immune to his Freeze, um, memory alteration needle that caused him to develop his feelings of humiliation. But, you know, if we'd actually gotten hints of that a little bit earlier, you know, like, you know, just maybe some pictures, uh, scenes where Shinosuke is looking at a picture of his dad and, you know, just something instead of just, you know, focusing on the Roy beat of the day and, you know, like, exploiting the new shift car. Just, you know, think a little bit here. You know, set things up. Shinosuke, for the most part, did not click with me. Though, yeah, I stated before that, you know, and the reason why he had such a lazy attitude before, and then, you know, he did his, uh, you know, like his little tight adjust brain click thing, you know, and possibly, like, uh, the result of repressed trauma from, you know, seeing his partner get, uh, oh, yeah, his partner. Anyone who saw that bit during the whole global freeze, he should not have survived that! Let's see here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Within like five or so meters of a gas main explosion, crushed by girders, we saw blood. We saw it. The minute I saw that, I thought, "Oh my God, he dead. He is so dead." But then, you know, like a couple of months later, oh no, nope, he's fine. No, the guy should be roasted jelly. I don't. You know, unless you come from fucking Krypton. That does not happen. No, sir. <laughs> you lose, sir. Ugh. Anywho. Yeah. Shinosuke didn't really have a whole lot to do with this thing. But, yeah. And, yeah, the chief later goes on and says that he was, I mean, that because of his dad and, you know, his connection to Zero, you know, and, well, what happened to him during the global freeze, that was why he was chosen to be Drive. But, nah. Yeah, again, Kiriko should have been the one who was, like, our main protagonist. But, oh, no, we can't have someone with a vagina who's a, com a main common rider. That will go and scare away the children. Ugh. You know what, whatever. Culture, you know, da, 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 whatever. Let's not get into that right now. Anyways, yeah, Kiriko. I'm, you know, like, good, and it's a good thing that, uh, that she and Shinosuke got together. I mean, you know, like, I mean, basically, they kind of form what I think a relationship should be. You know, like, uh, one side to balance each other out. You know, like, Shinosuke brings, you know, like, uh, well, a certain degree of impulse, a bit of, you know, like, a little bit of, you know, like a lighthearted spirit. Kiriko, she's focused, she's driven, and she knows, and we've seen multiple times that she knows how to keep him in line. So, yeah, the fact that uh, they get together and have a kid, well, good. At least they actually did something with her. Whereas, you know, when I've seen in most of these shows, yeah, you know, whenever the main lead is given a, you know, like a possible love interest, they never really elaborate on, or they just get killed off because a new way's writing it. Anyway, go. Go, 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 go away. Yeah, when he showed up, the guy was kind of, the guy was a schmuck, and uh, he didn't really actually get interesting until, well, you know, he started confronting Chase and start and started spouting his his whole Roy mutes have to be exterminated kind of thing, and well, later on we know exactly why. Though, I had more than a few problems with Go, mostly because well. I didn't really like the design of Mox, uh, Mox suit all that much. The powers were you know, interesting, 
But again, the personality was just not really clicking. But you know, like I can see what they were. I know I can see what they were going with him. And whereas the most secondary writers are either you know like the happy-go-lucky Looney Tune or super ser- or super serial revenge angst golem, Go is kind of a bit of a balance of both. And yeah, Go actually does have legitimate reasons to angst. And well, even though Go was kind of wrong, and I. Like, I mean, even before we uh, start to learn about uh, you know, why the Roy Mutes did what they did, well, yeah, Go just kind of came off as a bit of an asshole, especially you know, where Q got uh, mimicked by a Roy, uh, my Roy Mutes 072. And that, yeah, the Roy Mutes, well, they aren't exactly evil. They just kind of chose to mimic really, really crazy evil people in order to base their personalities off of. Oh, and, alright, fine, let's talk about the Roy Mutes. The Roy Mutes are definitely the source of where the schizophrenia is, I'm getting off with this show. I mean, like, at the beginning, it seemed kind of cut and dry that the Roy Mutes wanted to go and wipe out humanity. And, yeah, uh, the Roy Mutes that uh, Shinosuke and the special, uh, special, depart- uh, special Cases Department encountered, they didn't exactly go and... <coughs> they didn't exactly disprove that theory. What most of them just gleefully going around and uh, causing as much havoc and chaos as possible to try and find, uh, well, their soup, uh, find ways to evolve, achieve the prom, become one of the promised number, and start the global freeze and the second global freeze. However, yeah, we then later on when Bono comes into the picture. That it turns out that they weren't. I didn't actually choose to be evil. They were. They were programmed it except for Hart. In some ways, that kind of worked, but and uh, well, yeah. I personally would have just preferred it if the Roy Mutes were just kind of the whole. Dist- uh, kind of went with the whole destroy all squishies attitude, because trying to imply that they were just misguided when in the first episode they were gleefully going around and killing people. Yeah. Giant explosions, the global freeze, they crushed fuckers with a giant bowling ball for funsies. Yeah, people died. Huh. And yeah, trying to spin that they were just misguided and only acting evil because Bono implanted all of humanity's darkest traits in them. Uh, I don't. That just doesn't click with me. Though, great, and yeah, especially at the end of Drive, where they try to, where Shinosuke tried to imply that the Roy Mutes weren't evil, it's humanity that, and that uh, humanity's dark and negative emotions were manifested in the Roy Mutes. No. We've seen that the Roy Mutes can, uh, that the Roy Mutes have some semblance of conscience. Uh, if they just choose to, if they just bonded with decent people. Again, with 072. And I, at first, he was going to uh, be all. I- I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to copy you and kill you. But then Q showed him his favorite anime. They started to become friends, and yeah, they show. Uh, and yeah, back when you know, Brain and Medic uh, said that, well, basically, Roy means like that. They're not part of the equation, so kill them. And yeah, kind uh, mm. Well, then again. You know, them killing off their own kind because they don't fit their criteria for perfection. Uh, uh, yeah, anyone who knows a little bit about history could probably see that. Well, I don't exactly agree with how it was phrased in the show that you know, it was because of humanity's evil. No, it was because of one man's evil. Yeah. You know, Anyways, the Roy Mutes, I honestly thought that they should have just stuck with 001 as the main bad guy. Like, the Freeze Roy Mute, Mikage. Since, yeah, he was the chief, uh, the, uh, he was the prime, he was the defense minister, he held all the cards, he manipulated the uh, memories of the entire police force, you know, just uh, wiping out all memories of the Roy Mutes, his little, a little destructive tirade during the global freeze. He was the one holding the, holding the deck. He was the one manipulating the information. He controlled the horizontal and the vertical. Yeah, heart was just the one who heart and brain were just the ones that were well leading in his stead. Well, zero uh, zero one worked in the shadows, but nope. They just went and killed him off as they introduced a tri- type Trigon. Uh, 
not exactly the, uh, just kind of a wasted potential. Though, hey, I, and thanks to spoilers, we know that Freeze is coming back during uh, Drive a Ghost's movie. So, pff, silver lining, I guess. Well, anyways, yeah, the Roy Mudes... Uh, well, oh yeah, another thing with the Roy Mutes that I kind of didn't really like was how they wasted the single-digit Roy Mutes. You know, like going back to Freeze. I mean, like, Heart and Brain as, you know, like, the number one and two, you know, like, you know, that made sense. And, you know, Medic, well, yeah, you know, Medic was definitely one of the more vital pieces of the puzzle. It's just, well, the other Roy, you know, the other single-digit Roy Mutes, they could have been executed better. Although... I, although, yeah, I did like how uh, the show utilized 004 as basically being a sleeper agent for Bono, you know, to basically uh, serve as his puppet, you know, and, his, and you know, copying Krim, you know, and copying all of his intellect to, uh, used by him to create the uh, dark, uh, the, uh, to create the uh, gold drive driver. Yeah, you know, I, I get that. I'm just a little bit more iffy about 005 and 007. I mean, they just use 007 as the prototype for the, uh, as the prototype for the neo-viral cores, I mean, creating the hybrid Roy Mutes. I mean, he's the single-digit Roy Mute. They figured that the single-digit Roy Mutes are the best possible candidates to become one of the promised number. Shouldn't they have, you know, saved those guys? You know, went out of their way to make sure that they don't get destroyed or used for petty experiments? Okay, admittedly it wasn't petty, and you know, like 007 could have volunteered for the thing, but, uh, oh yeah, and 005, uh, don't really know what happened with him, apparently it was just a TV special thing, just, pff. but again, the single digit Roy Mutes could have been used a little bit better, I mean, if I were the one running the show, I probably would have made the single digit Roy Mutes, you know, like the Generals, or you know, like, I still kept heart and brain running the show, but yeah, you know, with them getting you know, orders from on high from Freeze, you know, just uh, you know, going, oh yeah, you need to target this guy. You need to make sure that this is kept under wraps. And yeah, you know, keep I still keep Medic where she is. Just I don't know, just bring in you know, like a new single digit Roy Mude to go and help shake things up. And you know, like the Tornado Roy Mude, you know, he was close to maintaining his evolution, uh, to getting his evolution, but I you know, just dropped and basically just became another monster of the week. 006, we never even saw his evolved form, and he just got he got his core you know, kicked out just to be used as a puppet by Bono. Although, yeah, 004 was actually pretty clever. I will admit that. It's just, uh, uh, I don't know. I just I could just think of a lot better use of the Roy Mutes than what they went with. And, yeah, speaking of the villains, that leads us to Bono. Ooh, Bono, 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 you unholy fucker. Yeah, he... Well, he's kind of... He's... Mm, he's hard to get a grasp on. I mean, yeah, he is very, very easy to hate this guy. And you want us to see this fucker just tell what's coming to him. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty damn telling when he has even worse parenting skills than, uh, than Gendo Akari. Yeah, worse than that. And yeah, he treats his family, he basically sees his family as nothing more than tools, just uh, things to rule over. And yeah, just created the Roy Mutes just out of spite, Infect and like, filled them on their programming with humanity's worst traits, basically because, well, yeah, he's a... Petty, hateful little fucker. And yeah, the whole I, and yeah, when we first see him, we don't know what's uh, we don't know what his deal is. Uh, but then, you know, uh, at the critical moment where uh, Drive and uh, Mock were fighting off against the Tornado Roy Mute, I think, yeah, he just goes in there, pulls his surprise bitches, and just shoots him down uh, while uh, running off with zero zero four to go and create the uh, Gold Drive driver. Hmm. Yeah, right. and yeah, that was definitely some good foreshadowing. Where Brain was just so concerned about getting uh, getting his laptop and uh, getting his tablet back, because and yeah, and Hart was not happy that Bono managed to get loose. Yeah, the genie was out of the bottle, and yeah, a whole other nightmares coming up coming around. 
or even the Roy Mutes would be in danger because of this lunatic. And yeah, I do really like that Go was the one to go and kill him. Uh, yeah, just taking uh, taking Chase's axe and smashing him like uh, like a watermelon in a Gallagher show. Good. Although, uh, him trying to start the second global freeze just because he wanted to take over the world. Why not? And, well, yeah, at least the show called out his reasons for being petty. The Raimians just wanted to, well, surpass humanity and, well, basically just, uh, like, uh, yeah, surpass humanity just to live. They know their numbers are limited. Although, if that were the case, why didn't Hart just try and, you know, like, uh, get a better grip on them? Just make them more fall in line, be more secretive, but... Well, yeah, we saw that Hart was being abused by Bono. And, yeah, just literally uses a punching bag by him just because... Yeah, he had... Uh, yeah, Bono had uh, uh, Hart mimic uh, a, a potential investor of his that turned him down and called him crazy. And just started wailing on him. Basically as a, you know, like an overly elaborate petty power fantasy. And yeah, he turned on Krim, the only person, and the only other human that actually defended him. Again, it just seems more than a bit schizophrenic. I don't know. <coughs> well, yeah, just... Well, and Bono was, kind of, was interesting... But he just seems like he just came out of nowhere to go and hijack the show. Ugh. Yeah, just... Oh, yeah. Chase... Yeah, they dragged his shit out for way too long. And yeah, the first ten episodes... Yeah, it's okay. And, yeah, and, uh, for, and yeah, at least like the... Maybe like the first fifteen episodes, you know, get some shots of him being... A, and yeah, some parts where he uh, kicks... Uh, drives ass... Starts to get glim or a slight surges of memory about who he was. <clears throat> but then, you know, when they had Medic go and reset him again, just made him into full-on, you know, Roy Butte Guardian. Just like, oh, come on! We did this already! Stop it already! Quit dragging this out! Either kill him, make him good, or just do something! <sighs> Anyways, yeah. And his machine chaser form, well, it looked kind of, it definitely looked cool. You know, like the one eyed one horn purple Roy Beauty Eater. And of course, I want that brake gunner. I don't care how, I want it. And, well, yeah, his, his common Rider chaser form, yeah, it's honestly the most aesthetically pleasing of the lot. And it's nothing, t and, you know, no giant tires along the side there. No freaking evil evil helmet. It's just you know, like kind of you know, like a modified version of his machine form, only to fit more of the traditional rider motif with a straight uh, you know, like purple silverist undershirt, and you know, undersuit, and with his uh, you know, like skull emblem on the sh on the shoulder pad, wheel in the back. Good. Yeah, it was just the most aesthetically pleasing of the thing uh, of the of the designs for the riders in this series. I mean, like, hey, I kind of like that he died, mostly because, well, yeah, uh, all the Roy, uh, yeah, they said from the beginning that all the Roy Beats had to be destroyed, so yeah, it was only a matter of time until Chase got, him, uh, got himself axed off. And when he became good, well, yeah, it was definitely good. And uh, I definitely have to be more of a secondary writer for Shinosuke than Go. Although, uh, personally, I would want to see, like, a death battle where he goes up against, like, I don't know, some other humanoid robot that discovered, uh, that's discovering his base emotions. Like, yeah. Okay, Machine, oh uh, yeah, Common Rider Chase versus I guess. Death battle, get on it. Anyways, this show was kind of schizophrenic. Just, for the first 20 episodes, it just kept the, you know, more goofy, uh, lighthearted feel. Then it just started to get, well... It started getting really good, admittedly. But, you know, if it takes halfway through your show in order for it to actually get good, there ain't, exa there ain't exactly something right in Denmark. Uh, well, anyway, that's all I can muster for now. I'll come back, like, uh, next week or so when I uh, talk about Ninja 31, 
and the episode of Drive that actually improperly introduces Ghost. And this has been David. Uh, this has been David. You've been poking around my brain. Don't leave tracks on the way out.